Carol? You might not always see Carol, because she is always in the back doing PowerPoint for us. She's the one who always puts the slides together. I'm really thrilled that she uh, chose to uh, step out of a comfort zone and come up and, and be liturgist with us uh, today. Is that not wonderful? Thank you, Carol. She does so much for us. Uh, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so if you ever want to be a liturgist, uh, you know, let us know, because uh, I don't like to be up here alone. I always like it when there's somebody else up here. Uh, so thank you uh, for those great words. It's a beautiful story. Uh, last week, as you know, many of you know, I was not with you. I was on uh, military duty. And last weekend, I had the honor and privilege of being the pastor on staff for a Wounded Warrior Weekend, where all our wounded warriors came for a weekend at a beautiful hotel, and uh, we treated them like royalty. Uh, these are people who are physically hurt, emotionally hurt, people who have come back and are having a hard time reintegrating. It was a fabulous experience to be their chaplain, and on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, we did a worship service on the beach. It was absolutely uh, fabulous. Uh, I've never done that before, but I decided if we were having worship on the beach, our church would grow about four times the size, because <laughs> people came as they were, and it was just a wonderful experience, so I thank you uh, for allowing me to be gone uh, for that time to, to be with those people. It was a very important time, so I appreciate that. But it's a great day to be back. It's Amen. Mother's Day, Amen. where we honor all women. Yay! This is great. Who does all the work? The women. <laughs> Uh-oh, Sean's causing trouble. His hand is back up. Down. You know, last weekend, the uh, garage sale. Who put the garage sale on? The women. Put your hand down, Bill. Oh, he wants recognition. I advertise on the street. That's scary, Bill. <laughs> Linda, control him today, please. <laughs> Anyways, it is a Mother's Day, and we uh, recognize uh, the female gender today, and I, I really struggle sharing God's Word today. This is the one day of the year that I really, really struggle with, because I know that for some women, this is a very difficult, difficult Sunday. If you are a, a woman and you've lost your mom, you think about your mom and you miss your mom. Or if you're a woman and you've lost a child, you think about that child you lost, so Mother's Day is a very difficult day. And for some women, it's a hard Sunday, too, because maybe they wanted to be a mom and could never have children. So you see, this is a Sunday that is really mixed emotions. For some women, it's, it's a great day where their kids get up early. Carol was telling me her daughter got up early and made her breakfast. Is that not wonderful? But for some of us, where your daughter lives far away, we didn't have that joy. So this is going to be a Sunday of very mixed of motions. And I'm really sorry for some if this is a tough day. And for some, they're probably remembering their mother and remembering a great childhood. And maybe others are going, thank God I'm out of the house away from my mother. This is different for all of us. I think the Catholic Church has a corner on the market for Mother's Day. Do you know that the Catholic Church doesn't recognize Mother's Day? They said it's not a part of their liturgy. It is not a part of really who they are. Mother's Day, in their eyes, is a hallmark holiday, and they don't want to get in trouble with women. So they kind of ignore Mother's Day. And so it's this day that I wish I, wish I was Catholic, because I wouldn't have to face this Sunday. And that's OK. But this morning, we are looking at a Bible story, which is a great story of where Jesus performs a miracle. I love this story. Jesus is walking to a city. Actually, he's walking to a festival. The Bible doesn't tell us which festival Jesus is going to. But he does get to where this pool of water is and this colony of leopards and people who are blind and deaf. You know, the outcasts of society. Remember, back in Jesus' day, if you had some type of deformity, you didn't live with regular society. Actually, you lived on this side of the church. The deformed ones are all over here. You know, you got Larry, you got Sean. You know, you got this side who are not perfect. But you got this other side here. Guys, give me a smile. This is the perfect side. Yeah. This is the pretty side. Yeah. This side, not so pretty. <laughs> but where does Jesus go? He goes to this side with the not pretty people. He goes with those who are a little deformed and the outcasts. 
And I love it because Jesus walks up to an individual and he asks a very simple question. Do you want to be healed? And do you know what the response is from the guy that Jesus talks about? If you remember what Carol read, he starts to give Jesus a dissertation of why he is not healed. Well, I try to get to the pool. I try to get when the waters are stirred up to go down there to get healed, but someone beats me to it. He just goes on and on. He's rambling on to Jesus. Stop that, Sean. Just rambles. Jesus asked him a simple question. And I get so upset because I just want to wring his neck. Jesus asks, do you want to be healed? He gives Jesus a dissertation. To me, that's a yes or no question. Do you want to be healed? Everybody on this side, what's the right answer? Yes. You all want to be healed. But this one tells Jesus all the excuses in the world why he hasn't been healed. Yeah, I mean, and you would expect nothing left from Sean, would you? Right. And I promised I wouldn't pick on you this morning. I'm really sorry, Sean. It just yeah. happens. But this is what happens. He gives Jesus this long dissertation, and Jesus says to him, do you want to be healed? And he looks at Jesus with that long dissertation, and Jesus says, pick up your mat and walk. Here it is, 38 years. Did you read, did you notice how when Carol read it, it was specific, what's the word? Specific. Specific. Thank you, boy, words are leaving me. He said, pick up your mat and walk. (coughs) And that's exactly what he did after 38 years. He picked up that mat and he walked. (laughs) (laughs) And that's what happened. He did, he picked up his mat and he walked. And, you know, it was a beautiful miracle that Jesus did. But you know what I don't like about it? Because when I want a miracle, I want lots of people to be around. I want to see it. People want to see it. There was nobody really around to witness this besides this whole side who was crippled. The normal population over here, you didn't get to witness this miracle. Rest of these people got to witness it. But you don't hear about any joy or rejoicing. But if you keep reading in on that scripture, you find out that he took his mat and he walked. He walked away. And what happens? He runs runs into some people who accuse him of working on the Sabbath. You see, it was Sunday. Again, Jesus is doing something you're not supposed to do. You do not heal people on Sunday. You don't do any type of work on Sunday. And yet Sean got up with his mat and he walked on a Sunday. And that is a no-no. You don't do that. So, when those Pharisees heard that Jesus healed, they were like, we need to find this man. You don't do that. That's the rule. On Sunday, you don't work. You don't even pick up a mat. That was considered working, what Sean did, was carrying his mat. You don't do it. So again, the Pharisees wanted Jesus, again, dead. And what I like about this story is that Jesus did the right thing. He saw somebody who was in need of being healing, someone who needed attention. And Jesus didn't care what day it was. He went ahead and healed him. Is that not a proud parent moment? Mary taught her son right. Think about it. Mary, remember she was a young girl, pregnant out of wedlock, which is a no-no, but she trusted God. She raised this little boy who was going to be the son of God, probably not understanding why or what was going on, but she raised this little boy named Jesus to do the right thing. Is that not what it is? Do we not want our children to do the right thing? And Jesus did the right thing by healing this man on the Sabbath. On a Sunday when you're not supposed to do anything, Jesus did it. So for Mary, I'm sure that was a real proud mother moment for her. We think about Mary. She was there when her son died on the cross. The last we hear of Mary is in Acts 1.14. And it says that Mary continued to pray. Even though her son had died and done his work, she continued to pray. To me, she is a role model for all of us. You have to keep praying. You have to. You see... It's an odd story for our lectionary reading today on Mother's Day, but I believe why it is there on our church calendar is because that is a moment where Mary knew her child was doing the right thing. 
And aren't we, as parents, excited and ecstatic when our children choose to do the right thing? Are there times when our children choose and do sometimes the wrong thing and we want to knock until tomorrow? Anybody else have those moments with their children? Or is that just mine? All right, look at that. Two hands are up back here. I like it. All right. That it happens at times. But we do the best we can, and we raise our children to do the right thing. And I'm very thankful that Mary raised her child, Jesus, to do the right thing, even on a Sunday when you're not supposed to work. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this beautiful story where Jesus healed on the Sabbath. We thank you that Jesus never stopped his working, even on a Sunday. We thank you that we have this day in which we can pause and read the story, listen to the words. And God, we ask that you help us to be more like Mary, to keep on praying, to become closer to you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen.